this lawnmower's piece out there. We just had to change up our change up where we were at for a quick sec. We got some um, place where we're at. We got some piano classes going on tonight, so we just had to go to another room. Uh, Islam, Hotep, blessed love, greetings, all that. Uh, what we're starting with today is we're gonna start with Mukarabin files. All right, because like we said, today's class, April second, is Dirty Moore's laundromat. So we're going to put it all out today so everybody's clear about why. Why are, we, why are we in this position? Why are we in this situation? All right? Why is it that the Moors aren't in the forefront of everybody's mind out here? Right? Only the people who have knowledge of yourself. People who don't have knowledge of yourself, they don't even... Moors isn't even something that even comes to their mind, right? So, what we're going to start with is an excerpt from the Mukarabin files, page 12. Again, just to put it on the record again, if you are somebody who's been studying Moorish information, and you've been studying Moorish science, and you've been studying Prophet Noble Juali, and you've been to rvbaypublications.com, and you've been to... Morris Public Records and Seven Seals Publications, etc., etc. If you've been to all these websites, if you're a member of a temple with a nationality card in your pocket, right, it's imperative that you go out and you get the Mukarabin files. The answer to the 45th question, and we want to give high honors, we want to give high honors to Brother Richard R. Edwards Hill for putting all this information together so we can be clear as to where we are and how we got here. All right. So we're going to start on page 12. All right. This is an excerpt. Um, on March 22nd, actually we'll go before that. Lomax B was allied with Green Bay to establish a rival organization. Green Bay, who was Supreme Business Manager, is said to have known many of the Prophet's innermost secrets. When the split came, Green Bay notified the Prophet that he would have to move his headquarters out of the Unity Club. Police were also able to obtain from internal sources a proclamation bearing the signatures of Crumby Bay Child Bay, Emilio, and Noble Juali dismissing both Lomax Bay and Green Bay from the Moorish organization. It was this document that Small Bay's testimony and Small Bay's testimony that caused them to originally charge the Prophet in this matter. On March 22, 1929, in Detroit, Michigan, while addressing a meeting in Temple Number no. 4, someone fired several shots barely missing Lomax Bay. Within the temple, a confrontation broke out between followers of Lomax Bay and those loyal to the Prophet. When the confrontation got out of control, police were called to the scene. And, and keep in mind, that's a repetitive theme. When you deal with FBI papers and you're dealing with, you know, the what 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 um is known as the Great Schism in in the Moorish movement, right? You, repetitive theme. Police call to the scene. Police call to the scene. Police call to the scene. Every time something happens, police call to the scene. Just the other day, well, if you watch the, 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 the lecture with Nature Al Bay, right? Brother was in the temple, said some things. So called Grand Sheik, Assistant Grand Sheik, whoever didn't like it, police call to the scene, right? So, follow the pattern. With, with this information of the Moorish movement, we have to play detective all the time. Right? So, put on your detective hats, put on your Sherlock Holmes hat, and put the pieces of this thing together. Because we all have enough information, right, based on all these different 
you know, sides of stories that we're getting, right? When we come into this information, based on all these different sides of information that we're getting, with the Mukro Bean files, you you be you be so clear as to who's legit, who's illegitimate, and the direction that we're supposed to be going, right? Um, in the wake of the clash, two police were wounded and two more, S Stone Bay and Z Low Bay, were badly hurt. However, Lomax Bay would escape unharmed. In fact, he would later leave the country, finally settling in Turkey. In a separate police report, a man fitting the description of Johnson Bay was seen making a phone call across the street from Temple Number no. 4. The report went on to say that a collect call was made from this same phone booth to one of the subordinate temples in Chicago. During the second, second annual convention of the Morris Science Temple of America, Givens Ill would once again make his declaration of reincarnation. It was September 19th, 1929. The Moorish Convention was entering its final hours. Lengthy discussions had been held concerning the leadership of the organization. Grand Sheik Emili Il rose to his feet and gave a speech concerning the Prophet's last instructions. The Prophet had declared Grand Sheik Emili Il his successor. Read that part again. The Prophet had declared Grand Sheik Emili Il his successor and left instructions for the faithful to unite under his leadership. Mili Il went on to explain that he understood that Satan was trying to undo what the prophet had built. But Noble Juali is a true and divine prophet and his words would be carried out. His words would be carried out. Emili Il, in an attempt to strengthen his own position, nominated Charles Kirkman Bay as Grand Advisor of the Morris Science Temple of America Incorporated. This nomination would make Kirkman Bay second in command behind Neely Eel. A number of delegates flatly rejected a number of delegates flatly rejected the nomination. Attorney Aaron Payne Ill, second business manager, right? Keep in mind all these names. Attorney Aaron Payne Hill, second Supreme Business Manager, stormed out of the convention carrying the Moorish Charter. Brother Ira Johnson Bay and a number of other sheiks became outraged and left the convention. It was around this time that Givens Hill entered the convention hall, walking straight to the platform, seating himself in the vacant chair and declared, I am back. He then said, I am the Prophet Noble Juali, reincarnated, and Prophet Noble Juali, the founder. We two are one in the same. <laughs> a silence fell over the convention hall. However, a vote was finally called. Two thirds of the delegates voted Mili Il in. Two thirds of the delegates voted Mili Il. In as Grand Sheik with Kirkman Bay as, as his advisor, i.e. Grand Advisor. Nevertheless, by the end of September, a number of subordinate temples would begin to follow Givens Ill as Prophet Noble Juali reincarnated. On Monday, September 23rd, 1929, just days after the convention, a group of men entered the home of attorney Aaron Payne Ill. With pistols drawn, they demanded the Moorish Charter. Payne L's wife was upstairs, overhearing the conversation, she immediately called the police. You know, once again, that, that, that thing, right? Upon the arrival of the police, upon the arrival of the police, The men surrendered and were later identified as J. Davis Bay, J. Mosby Bay, M Mosby L., J. Johnson Bay, and Gibbons Bay. Following his arrest, following this arrest, a police guard was stationed at the home of Attorney Payne Hill. On the morning of September 25, 1929, another group of men entered the home of Charles Kirkman Bay. They ordered him to stop eating and come with them. 
They said, we have orders to bring you back, dead or alive. When Kirtman Bay's wife objected, the gunman threatened their, her life. Seizing, seizing Kirtman Bay, they dragged him out to a waiting car. Meanwhile, his wife rushed to the phone and called police, informing them that she believed that her husband was being held at the Moorish headquarters. When the police arrived at the organization's headquarters, Kirtman Bay could not be found. Police leader later received a tip that M. Jackson Bay was one of the kidnappers. When first questioned, Jackson Bay refused to talk about talk, but later agreed to take them to where Kirtman Bay was being held. This information led P police to a subordinate temple at 4137 South Parkway. As police approached the temple, shooting immediately begun. It is reported that there were more than a hundred shots fired. When police finally gained control and entered the temple, they found Ira Johnson Bay on the second floor where he surrendered without struggle. His partner, Jay Stevenson Bay, decided to shoot it out with police and was killed. On the third floor, police sees D. Jackson Bay, the son of M. Jackson Bay. So let's, let's put this in perspective right here, right? All this stuff going on, all this going on, right? This is why people have this, um, this, um, I don't want to say hatred, but disgust for the Moorish movement because of all this madness right here, right? And all this is happening because people didn't want to accept the fact that Emile Il was the successor to the prophet, right? People didn't want to humble themselves to the fact that you're not qualified. They wanted to continue on. They wanted to play the game of, you know, power. Just like Noble Jolie said in, in, in the warnings. You know, people jealous of his fame and nobility. He said that when he was alive. When he was alive, he said that. So he knew what was coming. Being that he was a prophet, he already seen all this, you know, had the visions and all that. Already knew, right? That you have, you have more go jumping in the seat and saying that he's the prophet right now again right this is the mukarabin files this is right this is how this is how big this is okay it's not just like some little pamphlet this is a 300 page book that if you're supposed to be, because I went to my grand sheik and got this book, right? Islam to Dawid Aliyo for not hiding any information from Canaan Land Moors when it comes to being clear about what happened in the Moorish movement, right? Because it is, it's, it's important that we're clear, right? Um, now, we'll continue on. Following this incident, 64 members of the Moorish movement were taken into custody and questioned. Among those arrested were A. Payne Il and E. Lili Il, Grand Sheik. It is reported that the police ransacked the Moorish headquarters, finding the names and addresses of members in the Chicago area. When Moorish leaders began to protest and demand that police leave, they were threatened with arrest. The following day, State's Attorney John Swanson announced that he would legally seek to break up the movement. The Chicago Defender's front page carried an editorial entitled Stamp Out This Tribe. It called the Moors a vicious gang of irresponsible fanatics who demonstrated a disregard for human life. Ironically, the same Chicago Defender would admit two decades later that the police involved in the case did not respond diplomatically in the handling of the Moors and as a result a number of police and Moors were slain. The defender concluded, the Moors are not people to be fooled with. So, why are the Moors people to not be fooled with? Because we have a prophet. And we deal with things on a constitutional perspective. And when we deal with things constitutionally, that means international community is also involved. Right? And obviously, Chicago Defender did their homework on Noble Drawley to know that you know what I mean? Things were done, right? Things were were put in place in order for Noble Juwali to 
found and establish the the Moorish movement, right? So we continue on again. At the coroner's inquest, Ira Johnson Bay, who supposedly admitted to killing one of the police, refused to testify on the stand. He said he would do this. He would do his talking when the time was right. However, after Kirkman Bay and several police related their stories of the kidnapping and double murders, another member of the Moorish movement identified Johnson Bay as one of the men who killed Claude Green. So they know who killed Claude Green, right? They know who did it, which means that all those, all those Nobujali haters. That made the statement of why, if Nobu Juali is sovereign and if he's Moorish American, why did he get arrested? He never got arrested. He got detained to be questioned for the murders. But right here in the Mukha Ravine files, it tells you that the Moorish movement, a member of the Moorish movement, identified Johnson Bay as one of the men who killed Claude Green. Ira Johnson Bay decided to talk relating that he had aspired to become the grand advisor of the organization. When the Prophet's successor, Emily Ill, nominated Kirkman Bay with the Supreme Council, later approving, he became very disappointed. He confessed that he had intended to seize Kirkman Bay's certificate, which had the signatures of the 21 Moorish governors. In order to accomplish his purpose, he sent four henchmen with orders to bring Kirkman Bay dead or alive and by all means get the certificate. This is what's going on, right? This is what's going on, right? Power tripping. Moors power tripping. It's kind of no different than we see today, just that, you know, Moors aren't shooting each other up today, right? Because the FBI files show that you can't deal with it like that, right? Because as much as there's going to be only 10 or 12 black organizations on the King Alfred plan surveillance list, the Moore Science Temple of America is definitely on the surveillance list as well. Because you can go check the FBI files to know that the Moors were under surveillance. It's not no secret. Right? In the meantime, riots broke out in subordinate temples in Kansas City and Pittsburgh. A schism had set in the Moorish movement that would take more than 50 years to resolve. With all the information that the police had uncovered, no one was prosecuted. With all the information that the police uncovered, no one was prosecuted. All right? Why was no one prosecuted? Because, same thing that we, Moors, active Moors teach, jurisdiction, 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 cannot be established until status is established. And everybody knows, if you read the... the the FBI files, right, throughout the whole FBI files, all it talks about is Moorish Americans in there. Moorish Americans, Moorish Americans, Moors, Moorish Americans. So even in the FBI files, they set themselves up not to have jurisdiction in any of the matters, right? So nobody was prosecuted. All those who were taken into the police dragnet had to be released for lack of evidence. Noel Juali, who had not been well since the death of Green Bay, died mysteriously shortly after his release from jail. All quote-unquote theories of his death point to at least three possibilities. He either died from injuries inflicted by police during his imprisonment or was killed by followers loyal to Claude Green. However, in the words of one of his faithful followers, followers quote-unquote, his health went bad on him. His time had just come. In any case, on Saturday, July 20th, 1929. Sorry, y'all. It's all good. Uh, in any case, on Saturday, July 20th, 1929, at 9.50 p.m., he died. At, at his bedside were Dr. Clarence Payne L., attorney, Aaron Payne L., his father-in-law, Foreman Bay, and wife, Mary Drew. According to his death certificate filed by Dr. Payne L., cause of death was tuberculosis, bronchopneumonia. 
and also too when you check the death certificate the death certificate was filed by Dr. Payne there was no L on the death certificate the blood was placed in the Frank Edwards undertaking parlor 4136 Michigan Avenue funeral services were held on Friday July 26 1929 at 1.30 p.m. in the Pythian Temple Building, 37th Place and State Street. Representatives from offices all over the United States attended the Prophet's last rites. The body was finally laid to rest in Burr Oak Cemetery, Acacia Lawn, Lot 44, Grave 7. Right? So, you know that they're sticking to some principles in even burying him. And also, two. Sorry, what, Bruce, was, what was that last part there you're saying? That um, he, was he was buried in Burr Oak Cemetery, uh -huh. Acacia Lawn, Lot 44, Grave 7. Okay. Right? Do your research on Hirama Biff and Acacia. A C A C I A. So that's just other stuff, right? So 18 days after the passing of the Moorish prophet, a member of Chicago's subordinate temple number one declared that the spirit of the prophet had reincarnated into his form. This man was George Gibbons Ill, a.k.a. John Gibbons Ill, a.k.a. John Gibbons Ill, born December 6, 1904, in Sumter, South Carolina. Upon coming of age, he traveled west, finally settling in Chicago, Illinois, where he joined the Moorish movement in 1925. After a brief period in the temple, he was initiated into its Arab chambers. He also became the chauffeur mechanic for the Prophet Noble Juali. However, it is reported by his followers, one by his followers, so his followers report this, right? One day while working on the Prophet's automobile, shortly after his death, Gibbons Ill fainted. When his eyes were examined, he had the sign of the star and crescent in one eye and the circle seven in the other eye. Then they knew that the prophet had reincarnated into his chauffeur. Well, that's, of course, from his, his followers. Yeah. So is this, I mean, I guess I've come in a little late, but is Sorry. this, is, this um, is there some question to that? Is that, is it, are we questioning that? Yeah, because, you know, we already know that if you're going to, if somebody's going to reincarnate, they're going to do it through a child. Mm -hmm. You only going to reincarnate into an adult. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, but again, with Negro Black Color mentality, 1929, 1930 mm -hmm. to 34, you know, even today, it's some Negro black colored people, you sell them an invisible bridge and they buy it. No, I agree. And Boston, like you're saying back then, there's going to be even less sort of uh, right. Maybe right? skepticism, right? So by the end of 1929, a number of members had been sent to prison. The struggle over leadership seemingly came to an end. However, it was only the beginning of a number of court trials to follow. Sister Mary Juali tried to hold the movement together by writing a number of letters calling for the unity and assistance of the faithful Moors. In one of these letters, she wrote, Our Grand Sheik is in the lion's den, jail, and the demons are everywhere, trying to tear down the movement. Instead of uniting the Moors, these letters prepared the ground for a number of plots to overthrow and take control of the movement. Shortly after Mealy is released from prison, one of these plots came to manifest. The members of subordinate temples 3, 4, 7, 9, 15, and 18 had developed a plot to take control of the movement and appoint Kirkman Bay as supreme leader. A number of decrees, petitions, and affidavits began to flood the court. On February 13, 1931, J. Jones Bay filed a petition against Grand Sheik E. Mealy Ill. This petition was followed by another filed on February 25, 1932 by Kirkman Bay and one jointly by S. Lovett Bay and T. Crumbie Bay in 1933. Each of these petitions called for the removal of Grand Sheik Mealy Ill and the appointment of Kirkman Bay as supreme leader. 
in an effort to maintain control, Mealy Eel had several of these petitions and injunctions vacated. Right? So we'll look up vacate. And then that way you'll know that Mealy Eel was a student of law. Because mm -hmm. if you're going to vacate something, mm -hmm. you have to know the procedure protocol mm -hmm. in order to get that done, get those injunctions vacated, mm -hmm. right? The injunction filed by S. Lovett Vey and T. Crombie Bay was vacated on November 22, 1933. Nevertheless, it was this injunction that cased the ir irreparable damage, giving Kirtman Bay time to reorganize and have the upper hand. It was around this time that Kurtman Bay began using the title Supreme Grand Advisor and Moderator. He began issuing several proclamations calling for the reorganization of Moors under the corporate name Morris Science Temple of America Incorporated. This is, who's saying that? This is Kurtman Bay. Wanting to reorganize everyone under that? Under that. Okay. Right? Now, remember that Noble Juali already changed the Morris Science Temple of America into a corporate name. Right. Right? Right. So this is after he's passed now. Right. Moors who helped get him out the way right. are right. now trying to take over everything okay. now. Okay. Right? Right. Because their perspective is that well, you know, he's out the way, so now we can right, you mean you can't stand on his own because mm -hmm. cause you know the Moorish elders talk about um, the fact that many people were, were upset that Emilio Eel got the successorship, mm -hmm. right, when he wasn't in the temple as long as everybody else. Right. But that wasn't the basis as to why Noble Juali put Emilio in. The basis of Emilio being put in was because of his sincerity. Of course. Because he was loyal. To so, the prophet. Because I, as I said, I stepped in right? early. From what I've understood, you're going over sort of his death and the passing on of, of so, or is this what? Right. Yeah. Basically. And yeah, then what? Yeah. So, so now to catch up with this, what I'm sensing is that uh, this one gentleman, Mili Eel, is who uh, Noble Jewelry picked as his successor. Right. And this Kirkman Bay guy is another guy on the side. On the side who didn't like the fact that didn't like this, Eel was But he's successor. got some connections, so he's. So he's working together with people to try to overthrow this guy. All right. Key. Key thing that you said. He has some connections. Right. What are his connections? Right. That is only going to be known by that side. Mm -hmm. Right? Because remember, by this time, you have, you know, like, Noble Drawley's temple alone had 2,500 members. Okay. Right? And then there was branch temples in, like, 25 yeah, states yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right? So now there's this split. Mm -hmm. Between you know the ones who who were following E Media, they mm -hmm. pretty much went into the background because they didn't want to have nothing with with what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then there was the Kirtman Bay and Givens, because everybody's saying some everybody's claiming to be reincarnation of the Prophet. So basically, there's the one guy that uh, Noble Jewel Lee says is the person I want. Yeah, he's all the way right now. Yeah, but I'm saying then there's a, these two other guys vying for mm. to sort of pick up the pieces. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, he explained, Kirkman B, that the corporate files were now registered in his name and that the strongest temples in the nation were united under his leadership. With this move, he claimed supreme leadership, Sultan of the Moorish movement. This is Kirkman B. Kirkman B. Wow. Right. And then the proof of that is the proof right here. Here's the proof with Kirtman Bay with the Fez right there. And if you look at the Fez, you can see it says S-U-L, and obviously the rest of it says T-A-N. Right? Just so you know that this is not some stuff that we're yeah. making up or whatever. Right? Wow. And then keep in mind that Noble Drawley told the Moors, don't mark your Fez. Mm. Be pure like your prophet. So all, all this is evidence that this guy, 
Kirkman B is running a fraud. And all these people who follow him are are indirectly running a fraud. Whether, whether, and, and they're whether and knowingly or, 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 or just by right? being unconscious, right. they're still involved in it. They're involved in it. And this and this goes back to the same the, the same reason as to why, for example, um, Nation of Islam members, mm -hmm. some of them are cool with the Moors. They'll come to class, they'll sit down, we'll build and we'll hug each other and say Islam to each other. Mm -hmm. This is Nation of Islam members. Mm -hmm. Then there's some Nation of Islam members, they don't want to talk to the Moors. Mm -hmm. They don't want to look at Moors. They don't want to say Asalaam Alaikum to Moors. It's right? Because say. people don't want to step on toes of people who you know, they claim as their teacher, spiritual, whatever, you know what I mean, because... What's interesting, I was watching, I remember I was at the temple on the weekend, and I got some of those CDs, and they had a, the Dogma CD from Taj. Right, yeah. He was talking about how all of these religions, they're all, it's all the same stuff. Right. Just split up into sex. Into sex. So that any one of these guys who doesn't want to talk and this is what they've got us all doing, infighting. Right. They're saying, I'm Catholic, I'm right. a Jew, exactly. I, I'm, I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm Nation of Islam, right. I'm this. Right. So once that's going on, and you see people are being separated, you know something's up. Exactly. Because the instant, be up. the instant they start talking about separation, yeah. then, right. then, then you know that the, that, that, that the fraud's in the house. That's because, why. Because everything is supposed to be yeah. connected. That's why when you go on Canaan Landmore's website, you'll see Kirkman Bay on the website. Because mm -hmm. we don't push separation. Mm -hmm. We don't push picking sides and all that stuff, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We push getting the information out to the people, let the people make a decision, mm -hmm. right? But he's a bay. Mm -hmm. So whether or not he's dirty or whatever, that, that, has no, that has nothing to do with us. We weren't there around those times. But he's part of the, he's part of the drama. So his, his face has to be available to people. To you're, see, you're saying, so, that, you're saying that he's part of the story, right? He's there, right? You know what I mean? The 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 the, the Moorish play, the Moorish no, movie. I agree. Kirkman Bay is in it. The, he the, plays the, an integral part well, in the movie. About the Moorish history. You know what I mean? He the plays Moorish an history, integral yeah. part, right? And his face has to be shown. We can't hide him. That's one of the main characters, mm -hmm. right? As to why we're we're where we are right now, 2013. Ah. Right? Mm -hmm. Continue on. In fact, the annual national convention of 1933 was called the sixth annual convention, national convention of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science and the Moorish Science Temple Incorporated. At this point, Mili Eel's power was almost totally diminished and Givens L had became silent. Say that last part again, because I was... The sixth annual convention of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science and the Moorish Science Temple of America Incorporated. At this point, Mili Il's power was almost totally diminished, and Givens Il had become silent. So the other the other half that was fighting Kirtman Bay for the power. He backed out, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He said, you know, I'm not even going to get into this because for whatever reason. And then Emil the Eel's power was already, dead already because, pretty much. Because he really didn't have any connection. He was just the actual heir apparent. Right. But because he wasn't there in the hands-on stuff, right. he right. may have been more, he may have had more spiritual connection with connection everything. With it, but, but because now that the fraud's in and right. everyone's sort of like these sheep, Exactly, sense, you should right? just looking to find a, a shepherd to follow. Right. And uh, so by the time those two guys back out, now Kirkman Bay is the one that is 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 pretty much the head. Right. Even it's though it's under fraud, you realize that this sort of mimics how these it's agents, a pattern. This, yeah. these agents it's a pattern. and stuff, right? So you, that's why, so you know. That's you know. why we said, that's why I said at the beginning that people have to put on their detective Sherlock Holmes hat and deal with the Moorish movement. So that, so that we can be clear as to what happened, 
right that's why we say go get the mukarabin files and if you go to a temple and they, they're not making this readily available to you know that they're probably down with the other side right. that's trying to hide all this information all this information that we should that we're reading right now every single Moorish american should have and what i realized you know i was going to sort of uh sort of add to what you say i don't know if you even have to have your detective hat on i think what you have to have is you have to not have your stupid hat on <laughs> for real you know what i mean like, <laughs> like, like, I could be a stupid hat. <laughs> well, in a sense, like, yeah no no i don't even say that so much but what i'm saying is all of this stuff is fairly evident when yeah, you get to, you that, get, right. to that next level right 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 because you just have to read what's being said right to, to understand that to understand but, it. But, but what it is is what you have to do is stop buying into all the other crap right and and, and people who have bought into it have to humble yourself and realize that I bought into a fraud. Yeah. I guess you that's the I mean? thing I was saying to someone today about pride comes before the fall. If you right. can't admit to being wrong and sort of say, okay, I got to take a step back, that's what that's all about. Even if you take a step back by yourself, just like Nas said, you know, find a corner right. and close the door yeah. and then be by yourself for a little bit and digest what happened, what you've been involved in, and who you've been giving your finance to, so and all the, that. The name right. of it, because I had written it down, but I think I had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. files. Mm -hmm. So, and this is sort of like what I would say is the. Um, right here. No, I know, but. Yeah. No, but what I'm saying is, you know how they have like the FBI files? This right. is sort of like the more files. Moore, the more files, files. Yeah, yeah. And who's this written by? This is. Now, who's this, this gentleman? R. Edwards Hill. That's just a more who had the information and he didn't keep it secret. Answer to the answer to the 45th question. Okay, right. so, okay, so go on. Okay. Um, at this point, the given ill becomes silent. Okay. Mealy ill's only hold were his possession of the original Morris Seals, original Adept books, early convention minutes, and corporate files for the years 1928 to 1933. These items would later be passed on to his wife and family upon his death. His wife would later be arrested for not turning these items over to Kirtman Bay. Mm. So right there you see what's going on. Right there you know who's the agent. Right. Of course. Right? Of course. It is reported that the Mealy Hill family would undergo would, would go underground with these valuable items his grandson would surface in the late 1980s but would remain helpless in his quest for leadership in the meantime kirkman bay's position was strengthened when sister mary drew ali turned her possessions i.e documents literature le letters etc given to her by the prophet over to kirkman bay so what you sense there is a celebrant right there. Shortly after, she departed for Texas where she died in 1980. To add to his position was Sister Pearl Juali's approval of his leadership. I, I don't know why, I'm sensing something like <laughs> kind of bias right. or something, right? Right? Sister right. Pearl Ali, Mo Juali's wife. Oh. She approved Kirkman Bay's leadership. So what are you saying about that? Well, I mean, that, that in a sense says everything. I'm just saying. Um, right? Yeah. By the convention of September 1935, those faithful to Mimi Il had also united under Kirkman Bay's leadership. And, and then the takeover. That's it. Right? And then now you get to times like now, right, where you have you know, the Tajas and, you know, the Pleasant Bays and, and these people, right, who, you know, after this stuff goes on, you know, them, they're coming into the movement from talking to elders who were in the movement mm. that jump ship and they're in other organizations now. Really? For example, right, all this is nuclear beam files now. Right. About four years earlier, so this is nineteen from nineteen thirty-five, right? So nineteen thirty-one, right? About four years earlier, another 
new and emerging force was entering on the scene. In the summer of 1930, W. Fard Muhammad, often referred to as Professor Fard or Wali, appeared in the Paradise Valley community of Detroit. He first claimed to be a reincarnation of Nova Juali. So you have about six people now <laughs> claiming right, that's claiming adults. Wow. Right? But would later declare himself a lot in the person of Fard Muhammad. He went on to say that his mission is to gain freedom, justice, and equality for people of African descent. Is this not the same for uh Yeah, same for founded in Nation yeah. of Islam, yeah. the first one. Yeah. The first guy, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Right. Temple of Islam. Right. Okay. Right. Allah's Temple of Islam. Right. Yeah, but wasn't he a good guy and then he got taken or was he a sort of in the sense of being a good guy, I thought that he was pushing some positive stuff or something and then someone No, he was he was No, no, or no, he wasn't probably. He was a member. Right. Initially. Right. Right. He was a member of I think because I remember I was having this class talking about him or something. Yeah, we talked about it before. Yeah, I'm just thinking that, uh, no, but he was he was a man sending stuff off in the wrong direction, right? right. Okay, so go on. You no, know, by 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 not sticking to the protocol of right. Moorish right. movement. That's right. Well, I mean, I think there was something to do with him having people not wearing fezes or some right, kind of, right, right, or right. some, yeah, that's some nationality packages yeah, or right, right, something right. like him that. Him and Elijah Muhammad. That's or then right. getting them to do that's nationality right. packages and then not or something like that. Yeah. Some. Okay. So go on. Right. Um, Fard maintained he was of royal ancestry, the son of a wealthy member of the Karish tribe. However, it is reported by other sources his true name was Wallace Douglas Ford, <laughs> and he was sent to impersonate Abdul Farid Muhammad Ali. So you want to go check that name out? A B D U L. Abdul. F A R R A D Mohammed M O H A M M E D uh -huh. Ali. Okay. The latter was the Arab who came to New Jersey in 1915 teaching members of the Moorish movement Arabic. He too. He too had tried to gain control of the Moorish movement. According to other reports, Wallace Ford, aka Fard Muhammad, was a government mole sent to destroy the progress of the liberation of the so called black people. In either case, Fard Muhammad established the Allah Temple of Islam which would later become known as the Nation of Islam. Although there is no record of Fard Muhammad being a member of the Moorish movement, it is reported he studied many of the teachings of Nobu Juali which he incorporated into his own organization. There is record, however, that many of his early followers were members of the Moorish subordinate temple number no. 4 in Detroit. Among them, the late Elijah Poole El, known to many as Honorable Elijah Muhammad. While Fard was in Detroit, building his following, Givens El was doing the same in Chicago, Illinois. In a letter to his followers in 1933, he would declare, Moorish Science Temple of America instructions from the Prophet Nobu Juali reincarnated. This is to all you Moors. I have reincarnated back on August 7th, 1929, which now is four years, and I am having meetings three times a week, just like, like I have always did. I didn't come to I didn't come to die. I came to redeem you all from sin. The time is no the time is no depression. This is the end of time and the fulfilling of prophecies. I want you all to know that I, Noble Juali, your prophet, is still in Chicago. I live at 447 East 40th Street, now three years. This message is from Prophet Noble Juali reincarnated. All that believes this message that I am sending by Brother Rosen L will be blessed by Allah. 
I just want you all to know that I mean to carry out my mission. Any information that you want to know, just write to 447 East 40th Street to your prophet Noble Juali. This is my duty to let you all know that I am here. Now I will say peace. Signed, Prophet Noble Juali reincarnated. That was who? That was, um... That was, uh, no, no. Who's that supposed to be? Same. Given Zell. Given Zell. Kim right. Zell is the one, same one who was then later pushed out. Right. right? Okay. Yeah. Right. So he, he was pushed out. You know, he went to go think a little bit. Right, right. But how is he gonna get back in into this game? Right. And then real remember that oh yeah, I'm the reincarnated prophet. I could start issuing letters and proclamations and right. stuff like that. Right. right. So let's stop there because it's, it's getting crazy. Gets heated. Right. It gets way more deeper than that. You know, and we didn't even touch nothing yet. Right? So, that's nuclear bean files. So, if you know... So, let me just ask you, the nuclear bean files sort of give give the whole sort of what you call the whole um, scene or scenario before, or like what is, what what time period does that, and what, or basically what is that question answering? The 45th question, what was that question? See how it's... No, I guess that's just, it's just called that. Okay. Well, what, so what question. is that? Is that is that a is that a, like you talk about the files? Does that cover? What is that covering from until? Oh, th that's like this is. Is that like right around when he was sort of at the top of his thing and then died and then the whole succession and then, and then the succession after. and everything that happened after that, all the different groups the, that popped up, popped all up. the different organizations so that's that popped what this, up. That, that's what this all covers. The, let's go through some pages right here. Um, no, just sort of because I mean, I mean, yeah, like it, it, everything, it, everything, but it covers annual report, right? Right, um, for the Moore Science Temple of America by Brother Kush Cookbay, okay, um, Schoenberg Center for Research in Black Culture, letters sent from in 1999 to Moore Science Temple of America, FBI files, Moore Science Temple of America, oh, I see. um. Research notes in the Moore Science Temple of America. Um, affidavits that were filed for court stuff. I mean, so you can right. imagine, though, as much as this is somewhat comprehensive, as, as much as it's comprehensive, this is probably just, like, you see all these pages back behind you here? Right. This is, like, maybe just a tip. This is maybe some little sort of uh, directory, almost, of... Right, of, of, of all what, right, right, right. Exactly. But, that, but that's covering from almost, like, 19... 29 yeah. all the way up to almost 1980 right yeah well, well i mean there's stuff in there from 1999 well that's what i'm saying right so so it's, so it's covering know, sort of his death and after and after and sort of yeah. getting into all the stuff um newspaper articles right morris right. morris right. guide articles right. okay um um circuit court of cook illinois cook county illinois more science temple of america our love l versus German Bay. Right. Like, so this is, this, is, this is the aftermath of his everything, death up yeah. until as whatever period of time, yeah. right? Pretty much, pretty right. much. Right? So, and, and, it's, and it's very obvious that people have held that back. Held this back. Mm -hmm. Of course. Right? People don't even have access to this. You know? Just like people don't have access to to the Red Book. What's the Red Book? <laughs> the Red Book is like the second half of the, the Circle 7. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. Do we have that? Yeah, it's, that's at the temple. Okay. Stacks, stacks. All right. Stacks of the Red Book? Yeah. Right? That's the second half of the Circle 7 yeah. Quran? Yeah. Really? There's a yeah. second half to it? There's a second half to it. Because the first half is what everybody gets. Right. The second half was put into the Adept chamber, and the Adepts were supposed to give that to the people, but, you know, <laughs> right? Wow. It's a deep, it's, it's deep. Wow. The Moorish movement, you know what I mean? And all, and all this information that we're putting out is not to, you know, take away anything from the Moorish movement, discourage people and all that type of stuff. It's putting it all out there because it hasn't been put out there. And if it was put out there, then maybe people wouldn't have taken the position that they took, right? Following after these reincarnated prophets who obviously aren't, you know, 
uh, aren't what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Right? All right. Any other um, questions on that? Uh, no, I'm just, it's uh, opened up a whole, <laughs> a, whole new, a whole new area. All right. Study. Okay, so, so that was, that was intro for today. Okay, well, what's <laughs> for, class today? So let's go into class now. <laughs> let's do a class now. So, um, we're going to um, briefly read, there's a few, few articles from today, right? Uh, you know, the usual, mm -hmm. right? Um, the first thing that we want to touch on is this article that I found on our website. We're just going to re read couple excerpts and mm -hmm. we're going to reveal where it's coming from right so we can have a perspective of mm -hmm. who really knows about the Moorish movement you know what I mean mm -hmm. and, and who who are people that are actually studying this mm -hmm. right but this is on the person's website are you go on their website mm -hmm. what we're, we're going to read right now is on their website and so what I understand about website a website is like it's, it's not it's different than email it's like uh, your it's your uh, it's your, your personal no, but it's your, your it's your um, it's almost like your pamphlet of right. what you or it's like your it's like your magazine of, of what you got going mm -hmm. on right a website right that you can interact with them. I mean, is he selling something or is this just a web? No, when I show you what it is, you'll, you'll yeah, you'll understand. Okay, right. Um, so we will just go to um. Okay, now in reality, just who are the Moors? Answer. They are the descendants of the aboriginal people of the land regardless of the continent in question. Here in the Americas, North, Central, and South, and the adjoining islands, we receive our pedigree from the ancient Moabites who were already here when the continents broke apart from being a single landmass as taught in public schools as Pangaea, due to monumental earthquakes. The word more means black, as well as love, such as Amore. We were... We were known as the educators of the world. We were simply called the beloved blacks from the collective of nationalities throughout the world, from ancient Sumeria to ancient Egypt, ancient Israel to Al-Andalus, modern Spain, all the way to ancient Americas, and we are still here today. And we are still here today. Only we have been denationalized and misnomered as Negro, Black, Colored, African American, Puerto Rican, Latino, etc., etc. We are dark to light, brown skin, coarse to wavy haired people of the world. But it is my contention there exists a conspiracy within the local halls of government to deliver smear tactics against the Moorish Republic with the aim and attempts to discourage unregistered Moors, Blacks, and Latinos from declaring their true and authentic nationality with their very own government, which would otherwise be kept secret from them within the secret records of local Shriners and Masons, thus resulting in them never exercising and enjoying birthrights of free people, the birthrights which we have not enjoyed from the Spanish Inquisition to present-day mental slavery of our people. The Supreme Court of the United States of America is hereby challenged to render written in personam its constitutional jurisdiction to govern the lost found indigenous tribes of the Moorish American nation, an estimated 60 million descendants. The U.S. Supreme Court, in full authority to exercise the power of the U.S. Constitution, joined with the entire embodiments of Congress, now has the burden of proof to any jurisdiction to justly govern the clean and pure nation of Moorish Americans, present and in their proper person now before you. We encourage every reader of this article that may be of Moorish descent, black and Latino, to swiftly declare your Moorish nationality to the citizen to the civilized nations of the human family. Come and learn how there are only two forms of law according to the US Constitution, criminal and civil. So where is traffic law mentioned? That's the point. It's a scam perpetrated against the public citizens. Begin to ask yourself, why is it that outside of the Justice Center traffic court building on Main Street, there stands a UF flag waving in the wind, but once you go into the courtroom and finish viewing your rights on TV, the magistrate begins your hearing with yellow fringed tassels around US flags located behind the bench. This is not cosmetic, people. 
It changed the jurisdiction of your hearing and suspends your constitutional rights. Come to inquire why the Shriners building downtown has a statue of a man of European descent wearing a fez, which is the ancient and national headdress of the Blackamoors. Ask, who were the people who made President George Washington a general earlier in his career when only presidents can make generals? Why did the Supreme Court decide within the Dred Scott case that no individual of African descent can ever become a U.S. citizen? And that ruling has never been overturned or modified. Don't believe me, do your homework. Ask those who may question our indigenous status why scientists have unearthed dinosaur bones and fossils from millions of years ago, but yet have to display one slave ship inside of a museum to justify the presence of millions of African descendants here. And lastly, why did every U.S. bill denomination receive a facelift from small to large face, 5, 10, 20, 50, and 100, all except the $1 bill, which remains a small face? Now ask yourself why. The person whose site this is on is Immortal Technique. And he's a conscious hip-hop artist, whatever. Everybody knows him from mm -hmm. putting out mixtapes and all that. Talking against fraudulent governments and Illuminati and all that. Mm -hmm. Right. The Immortal Technique is on Moral Science. This is on his website. His site. Rapper guy knows about what's going on, and then people who want to not get down with more science. When the mortal techniques on more science, it's on his website, right? Black's Law Dictionary Negro the term Negro means a black man or descendant from the African race. In the case Rice versus Gonlum, the term Negro means necessarily person of color, but not every person of color is a Negro. Hmm. So that's law case. Negro means necessarily person of color, but not every person of color is a Negro. Hmm. Right? And keep in mind, Person means corporation, not oh, human being, not living entity. Color means semblance, artificial, fake, whatever, right? So. Yeah, but isn't that then stating that that dictionary is? So no, this is this is the court case. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, this is the, this is the court case. Law yeah, Black's Law Dictionary definition of Negro. The term Negro means a black man, one descended from the African race. Right. But in the definition, there's a court case. Right. In the definition. Of In the court. definition, there's a example of a court case. Okay. And the court, the example of the court case states that the term Negro means necessarily person of color, but not every person of color is a Negro. Okay. Right. Well, this is just going back to what what is being said, which is Negro, Black, and color. Right. Exactly. Okay. Right. Um, August twenty eighth, nineteen oh eight. Niagara Movement, National Organization of Colored Men Coming to Oberlin, will convene August 31st to September 2nd, many prominent men from different sections. The Niagara Movement, a national organization of colored men established in 1905 and taking its, ta taking its name from its first meeting place, Niagara, will convene in Oberlin August 31st to September 2nd. Its membership role include many colored men of prominence as the General Secretary Professor W. E. Du Bois of Atlanta University, well known as the author of The Soul of Black Folk, Mr. F. L. McGee of St. Paul, Professor William Pickens of Talladega College, Dr. C. E. Bentley of Chicago, and many others who might be mentioned. The business of the conference at most of which the public will be welcome. On Tuesday evening, September 1st, a mass meeting will be held in Warner Hall to which all citizens of Oberlin are invited. The address of welcome 
will be delivered by Mr. Charles Chestnut of Cleveland, known as the author of The Marrow of Tradition, The House Behind the Cedars, and The Colonel's Dream, and the Niagara membership will be represented by Professor Dubois, Mr. F. L. McGee, and others. The purposes of the Niagara movement are well set forth in its constitution. So there's a color group, mm -hmm. and they have a constitution in their group, which means that these people know about constitutional principles and all that, when they're calling themselves color, color group, right? Um, in its constitution, of which one article reads as follows. The Niagara movement stands for freedom of speech and criticism, an unfettered and un unsubsidized press, manhood suffrage, the abolition of all caste distinctions based simply on race and color, the recognition of the principles of human brotherhood as a practical present creed, the recognition of the highest and best human training as the monopoly of no class or race a belief in the dignity of labor and united effort to realize these ideals under wise and courageous leadership. And then you're going to read on, blah, 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 and they, they go on and on and on about the Negro and trying to help the Negro and, you know, um, having all these meetings and colored people need to this and colored people need to that, blah, 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 mm -hmm. right? The Niagara Movement was a movement of African-American intellectuals that was founded in 1905 at Niagara Falls by such prominent men as W.E. Du Bois and William Monroe Trotter. The movement was dedicated to obtaining civil rights for African-Americans. Hmm. Now remember, civil rights got struck down as unconstitutional before they founded this. And they have a constitution. So that means they study the law and they know, so they're gaming people, right? In 1909, the Niagara movement was hampered by lack of funds, and many members, including the Boer, joined the newly founded National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. What's in the book there too, right? In the, in the, um... the NAACP was an organization which used legal power to obtain rights for black mm -hmm. Americans and which is still in existence today. That was a group mentioned in the King Alpha Club. Yeah. And there's your boys, the founders of the Niagara movement. We're all sold out mm -hmm. to become agents to keep Negro black colored people mm -hmm. Negro black and colored. The so-called intellectuals. And remember, W.E. Du Bois was one of the big um, disrespecters of Marcus Garvey. Big, big time. Like, big time. He used to pump Garvey hard. Right? Because Garvey was dealing with nationhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were dealing with keep you Negro black colored. So right, so, so there's the agents again, right. right. Okay, so there's there's your boys, the Negro black colored leaders, sellout sellouts, right. So who are these guys now? So top row, left to right, H. A. Thompson. Some of those guys look European too. Uh, uh, Alonzo F. Herndon, Georgia. Somebody unidentified. And somebody else unidentified. So that's the top row from left to right. Right? Top row from left to right. Okay? Don't worry, you could go back and, or you just go online, Google Niagara Movement, and then the picture will come up, and all their names are there. Second row, Fred McGee, unidentified boy, J. Max Barber, W. E. Du Bois, Robert Bonner. Right, so second row. Right, an unidentified boy who this guy is hugging up like, <laughs> right, like some poop <laughs> or something. Right, bottom row, left to right, Henry L. Bailey, 
Clement G. Morgan, W. H. H. Hart, and B. S. Smith. All the agents. So once again, just like you mentioned, leaders who do not have such usable material in their dossiers have been approached to take government posts mostly as ambassadors and primarily in African countries. The promise of these positions also has materially contributed to a temporary slowdown of minority activities. So these are the people that were responsible for the slowdown of minority activities back in the day. Okay. Right? When Nobu Ali came and basically um, brought us our freedom, mm -hmm. it was these people and their crew that were trying to, then that were trying to work against it. Okay. Including people on our side of the movement who were agent moles mm -hmm. put into the movement to try to destabilize the movement and call themselves reincarnated prophets and start all these other organizations pushing the same black Negro agenda, right? If you, um, right, however, we do not accept these lowdowns to be of long duration because there are always new and dissident elements joining these organizations with the potential power to replace old leaders. All organizations and their leaders are under constant 24-hour surveillance. The organizations are the Black Muslims, Student Non-Violating Coordinating Committee, Congress of Racial Equality, Yuru Movement, Group on Advanced Leadership, Freedom Now Party, United Black Nationalists of America, New Pan-African Movement, Southern Christian Leadership Conference, National Urban League, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, i.e. Niagara Movement, Committee on Racial and Religious Progress, and Morris Science Temple of America. It's there too. Well, it's there, because we just read the Mukro Bean Files, and they said in the Mukro Bean Files mm -hmm. that some of those Moors were agents put in. Okay. Right? So, and if you check the FBI papers on the Moore Science Temple, which is online, which is accessible to anybody who wants to go read it, mm -hmm. it's on the... A matter of fact, when I called the, F, the, the Freedom of Information office, mm -hmm. they said, we get so much calls about the Moorish, the FBI papers of the Moorish Science Temple, it is now just available online. You can just go get it. You don't even have to order it anymore. This is in Canada? This is in the States. Freedom of Information at, um, place or after? Yeah, so it, it just, just Google FBI files. Morris Science Temple of America, and everything will come up. Yeah, everything will come up. Right? No. At the appropriate time to be designated by the president, the leaders of some of these organizations are to be detained only when it is clear they cannot prevent the emergency. Working with local public officials during the first critical hours. All other leaders are to be detained at once. Compiled lists of minority leaders have been readied at the National Data Computer Center. It is necessary to use minority leaders designated by the president in much the same way as we use minority members who are agents with central and federal, and we cannot, until there is no alternative, reveal King Alfred in all its aspects. Minority members of Congress will be unseated at once. This move is not without precedent in American history. This memo... Attorney General, preliminary, pre, preliminary memo, Department of Defense. This memo is being submitted in lieu of a full report from the Joint Chiefs of Staff. That report is now in preparation. There will be many cities where the minority will be able to put into the street a superior number of people with a desperate and dangerous will. He will be a formidable enemy, for he is bound to the continent by heritage and knows that political asylum will not be available to him in other countries. The greatest concentration of the minority is in deep south, eastern seaboard, and Great Lakes region and the west coast. That's King Alfred. That's King Alfred plan, right? Who people, if you go on our King Alfred class to exterminate, um, to exterminate Negro black colored people, there's um, people on there 
that's making reference to King Alfred Plan being in some fictional novel or something like that, and it's not a real document and whatever, right? Hmm. My challenge to them was 1984 by George Orwell was a fictional document, mm -hmm. fictional novel, mm -hmm. and a lot of that stuff that was in that fictional novel we see going on today right now. Yeah. And then, you know, zip the lips now. Nobody's not talking nothing. Nobody's not talking no crap now. Hmm. Right? So, we can, we can see that authors used fictional writings to actually put things in place so that people can have a reference point to know what's going to happen well, I think we later talked, on. I talked to you about this before, right. that, which is what the Prophet had sort of uh, given us as our charge, was to put out literature. Right. That, I think, is an answer to what these Europeans have been doing since the very get-go, which is just continue to put out literature there, false literature, which then fills your mind with all this crap. With stuff that you don't, don't, don't even need to be filled with. That's right. Right? And then since you brought up Noble Juali, common knowledge about Noble Juali that blacks, Negroes, and coloreds refuse to accept. Right? One, two Americans of African descent who are rumored to have studied under Jamal Aradin Afghani were the parents of the man who would one day establish more science in the United States. According to one legend, Nobujuali made a pilgrimage where he studied with more scholars and received a mandate from the King of Morocco to instruct Americans of African descent in Islamism. On his return to the United States in 1913, he had a dream in which he was ordered to found a movement to uplift fallen humanity by returning the nationality, divine creed, and culture to the persons of Moorish descent in the Western Hemisphere. Noble Juali is said to have made a historic visit to Washington, D.C. in order to reclaim the Moorish flag and obtain official recognition to call his people to their true faith, Islamism. The U.S. President, believing that African Americans will not embrace Islam, gave Noble Juali full authority to teach more science in America. Following the inexplicable death of Noble Juali, the Moorish Temple continued and gave rise to unique Islamic groups among the African com American community, including the Nation of Islam. Noble Juali was five times greater than the last prophets before him. Noble Juali restored the Moorish Americans as a new nation and with sovereign power at the 1928 Pan-American Conference for Indigenous Nations. Also in attendance at the Pan-American Conference was several tribal chiefs of the continental nations and the United States were present and represented by Secretary of State Hughes, who was in awe of the well-established constitution of the Moorish delegates. During the conference, Nova Juali was given the mandate for the land which the United States has been occupying, occupying on an expired mandate since 1871. After this Pan-American Conference of Nations, the United States' refusal to yield hallowed soil will, re will result in a severe warning by the Holy Prophet. Until my moors are free in their own home, the worst is yet to come. The United States owe Moors a great debt, and they must pay in compound interest. The United States have one more war to win. Negroes, blacks, and coloreds denounce the prophethood of Nobu Juali. Right? Where are we at? 19? Good. Um, for the brothers and sisters in Canaan land. You just want to put it on the record again, or people who are out there, right? Canada, CIK number 00023-0098. Business address, right? Business address for Canada. Canadian Embassy, 1746 Massachusetts Avenue Northwest. Washington, D.C. 
So we just want to put that on the record that Canada, just like U.S., is private corporation, have nothing to do with the people of the land. Right? Secondly, Constitution Act of Canada for the Moors, again, in this jurisdiction, when people try to impose the Constitution of Act of Canada on you, go to Section 32, Application of the Charter, and I quote, This Charter applies, A, to the Parliament and Government of Canada, in respect of all matters within the authority of Parliament, including all members relating to the Yukon Territory and Northwest Territories, and B, to the legislatures and governments of each province in respect of all matters within the authority of the legislature of each province. Say that one more time. Application of charter. Mm -hmm. This charter, meaning this Constitution Act of Canada, mm -hmm. applies to A, the Parliament and Government of Canada, mm -hmm. and B, the legislatures and governments of each province. Where does it mention, mention Canadian citizens there? So that means that the Constitution Act of Canada only applies to the de facto mm. members of Parliament, which are all their boys, the legislatures, right. and the governments of each province, and has nothing to do with the people. Right? To reinforce this, that it has nothing to do with you. You're going to go to the International Association of the Chiefs of Police. And you're going to go on there and you're going to look up Law Enforcement Oath of Honor. Law Enforcement Oath of Honor. And I quote, this is the Law Enforcement Oath of Honor that all public servants mm -hmm. in this jurisdiction mm -hmm. take before they get their badge, their okay. gun, and all that. Mm -hmm. On my honor, I will never betray my badge, my integrity, my character, or the public trust. I will always have the courage to hold myself and others accountable for our actions. Okay. I will always uphold the Constitution, my community, and the agency I serve. Oh, who's uphold what? I will always uphold the Constitution, mm -hmm. my community, mm -hmm. and the agency I serve. Okay. If they upheld the Constitution Act of Canada, mm -hmm. their oath would say, I will always uphold the Constitution Act of Canada. Because law, if these guys are law enforcement, law is specific. And they're not leaving things up to speculation. So you're saying that constitution is what the, or the natural constitution that we are all talking that about. That we're talking about. Right. Not the Constitution Act. Right. So they take their oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only other constitution in this jurisdiction but what's interesting when you read that, I sort of felt that there was a sort of hypocrisy there because it also says to uphold their agency. Right. And that agency can then be an agency that's uh, about... That, that's about... That's uh, about their own constitution. That's right. Right? So in a sense, maybe that's their way... That's a way for them to, to step around stuff, right? Right. Exactly. On top, on top of this, the majority of the people mm -hmm. who they deal with mm -hmm. are stateless. Have no nationality, so you know they're going to assume that well the Constitution Act of Canada is what protects me from you guys who like to abuse your authority. When really and truly the Constitution Act doesn't even protect you because that only applies to Parliament and the legislatures. Right. Right. Um, Suharoto, 
second president of Indonesia. Just so you know, everybody knows about your birthrights. Everybody's exercising your birthrights. Negro black colors don't want don't want their birthrights. But everybody else has their birthrights and is using it. Right? Second president of Indonesia. And all of his pictures he wearing a fed. Just go Google him. There's his name right there. Suharato. Just go Google him and see all the pictures that he has with a fez on. He's from Indonesia. Right? Asiatic. I want to go back to this soap. On this thing with this law enforcement soap, you realize his first oath is to the badge. Right. What is the badge? I don't even know what that is, right? I mean, the badge itself could have some stuff. Whatever on it. Well, that's what I'm saying, right? And then there's other things. Let me just sort of for one second. Then it went down. And, and, like, and but, but I will, I will, I will have the courage to hold myself and others accountable for our actions, my integrity, my character. So to me, a lot of this stuff. To me, if I was re re writing this, I would say, on my honor, I will never betray the Constitution. That would be the right, first. Yeah, that would be the first. That would be the first right. thing. Straight. Right. So Straight. to me, this. Worries me, right? Because if you're asking these guys to uphold something, this thing is full of, full of problems, right? But and and this is this is why we go to make sure we identify them as, what? as public servants, right? Serving us because their job is to serve and protect. That's right. But if we want to call them officer and we want to call them peace, peace people and mm -hmm. all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Then they're gonna go by what what they give us, opposed to what we demand that they do, and that's in any jurisdiction. It's funny you say that about the serve and protect, because I drove a uh, cop car drove by me. I said, I thought to myself, shouldn't it be to protect and, and serve. then serve? Right, right, to serve. Who are you serving? Right, right. To me, the first person thing would be to protect. You would want to protect the people, then you would probably want to serve them. But right. To me, that to me that's a that's uh, right there as a statement saying that they're up to no good too, right? Right, right. And, and remember that out here, it's only them that have that on their car. OPP doesn't have that car right. on their car. RCMP doesn't have that on them, right. right? And those are higher levels of, 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 of public, public service. service. <laughs> right. All right. Here's Ahmed the fourth Sultan of the Ottoman Empire 1944 to 1954 All right we're in we're in your stuff openly All right the Sultan we're in your stuff that yeah, you don't want you want to be Negro black colored people All right Sultan of the Ottoman Empire there's his name you go check him out there's the time frame and remember the Ottoman Empire fell and then the Turkish Empire took over mm -hmm. But then look how he looks. He looks more Turkish than mm -hmm. Ottoman. Mm -hmm. So again, we could see the transfer, the transfer of ownership, mm -hmm. right? No different in Kemet. When the Europeans start coming into Kemet, mm -hmm. they cost all their self pharaohs and all that type of stuff. And then we see the pictures of the pharaohs of Egypt in the late dynasties mm -hmm. not looking like a Saren, a Sedan, mm -hmm. right? Competitive theme. Right. 
Florida Governor Charlie Crist. So I do with a feather. <laughs> 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 this is the governor of Florida. Fezzed up. <laughs> right? Governor of Florida, Fezzed up, big smile and all that. Right? <laughs> and then we talked about this one before. Oh, shit. We talked about this one, right? Malachi Zadok, New York L. Malachi Zadok L. Right, he's not wearing that little small tarbouche that you see Nwapians walking around with today. Right? Right? He's not wearing the little small tarbouche that you see Nwapians walking around with today with the onk on the front. Right? Ottoman Empire Minister of the Interior. Right? 1915. So even as far back as 1915, they had their fezzes on. Right? This is Canadian Army. He's called the Pontifical Zouave Lulu, 1868. Yeah, we can do that. Right? 1868. We got eight, yeah, we got half hours. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, do your thing, yo. Right? Two minutes more, we're just moving moving back to our comfort spot. Right? So keep in mind that everybody, everybody's clear and everybody knows about our birthrights and our nationality and and everything. And we're the ones that are in the dark about this whole thing. Right? We're the ones in the dark. So when the time comes and you hear dirty moors, when you hear dirty moors, you start talking about, you know, what, what they can do, you know, power that they have because, you know, they're upholding something that was, you know, from a Moorish perspective, unconstitutional, right? We have to know to stand up for that. Because everybody, everybody knows about us, right? Everybody's clear about us. And until we take the steps, until we take the steps to make certain things change by stepping up, right? We're going to continue to be in this, in this madness that we're in, right? There was something there, there was something that I forgot to print. But I'm gonna give you this. Then you could just oh yeah. So what brother's gonna read is going in again under the great elder J. A. Rogers, Nature Knows No Color Line. Right? And just print something and you want you wanna get on or you which one? To just to read that. Yeah, you, you is this one here? Yeah, yeah. Just read as much of that as you can. Islam. The Negro as more Negro ancestry in the er, in in arist in arist 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 aristocratic European families. Seven years after the capture of Gibraltar, the Moors invaded France and conquered or overran most of its southern portion. They probably went as far east as Geneva, Switzerland, was then a part of France. In 732, they reached Tours, two days' march from Paris, but were beaten back by the Christians under Charles Martel. 
They remained in southern France, however, until 1140, principally in the Camarec on the western Riviera, which is still known as La Petite Afrique, Little Africa. In 1838, in 1838, they took Marseille, Marseille, and in 18 and in, in and in 842, Arles. Aided by fellow Muslims from the east, they captured Sicily in 18 in 837 and took a million pieces of gold. In 846, they invaded Italy, seized Rome, plundered the Vatican and Saint Peter's Cathedral, and carried off immense wealth in gold, jewelry, tapestry, and paintings. Three. Three. Later, with the Jews as intermediary, they sold back much of this loot to the Pope. In 982, they defeated the flower of Christendom under Otto II of Germany. Unmixed Negro troops, most of them from Ethiopia and the Sudan, furnished a large part of the Moorish or Saracen, Saracen troops. Thereafter, they dominated most of Italy for years and part of it until the 13th century when they were swamped by, by further white invasions from the north. Gradually, they were absorbed into, into the Italian population, even as the African brought in by the ancient Romans had been. In Africa, the Moors continued to be a leading power, and to, and to no little extent in India also. They dominated the Mediterranean and the North Atlantic, and plundered the coasts of Western Europe and the British Isles. They even conquered and ruled parts of Scotland. David, David Mac Ritchie, eminent British archaeologist, says, so late as the 10th century, Three of these provinces were wholly black, and the supreme ruler of them became, for a time, the, for, for a time, the paramount king of Transmarine Scotland. We see one of the black people, the Moors of the Romans, in the person of King of Alban of the 10th century. History knows him as Kenneth, sometimes as Duba, and as Niger. We know as an we know as an historical fact that Niger al dub has lived and reigned over certain black divisions of our islands, and probably white divisions also, and that a race and that a race known as the sons of black succeeded him in history. Four, Welsh traditions. He says, tell also of these black people and the legends of the history of the Scottish Highlands are both witnesses to the existence of a purely black people there. With the, with the then most powerful navy, the Moors preyed upon shipping in the Atlantic, capturing the passengers and sailors, and selling them into slavery in Africa and Islamic lands of the East. A veritable terror reigned in the Mediterranean, says George Hardy. They ravaged the coasts of Portugal, Spain, southern France, and went as far as Britain. Five, in 1631, they attacked Baltimore Castle, Ireland, and their leaders, and their leader, Black Ali Kusa carried off Mary, daughter of Sir Finian, Sir Finian O'Driscoll. Ali Krusa, native of Morocco, had been a slave of O'Driscoll, escaping back to Morocco. He returned and surprised the castle. Ch castle, six. Chambers says, captivity among the Moors of northern Africa was, was no uncommon fate for Scotch mariners. Seven, he tells of a number of them sold at Sali, Morocco in 1636. George I, in his speech from the throne, up to, uh, throne, October 19, 1721, mentions the great number of my subjects' delivery in slavery. Eight, a result of his, of his treaty with M Murai Ismail, emperor of Morocco. So I'll read to the end. So many whites were being taken into slavery in Africa that in 1150, a religious order, the Trinitarians, was founded to free them by purchase. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, one of those freed was Cervantes. There is reason to believe that there were Negroes in Britain before Julius Caesar. Irish folklore mentions a small black people in Furball. These might have been prehistoric bushmen, pygmy flint instruments, Negrito skulls, and Grimaldi relics have been found in Scotland. A very ancient British saying, according to, to Burton Stevenson, is black as a blowman, B-L-O-A-M-A-N, or black as a blackamoor. Godfrey Wiggins, Gerald Massey, and David McRitchie have written of these ancient British Negroes. When we 
when we do know, what we do know is that the Phoenicians, a Negro people, did mine tin in Cornwall and that Egyptians went to Britain before the Romans. Gerald Massey gives abundant proof, including Egyptian works in ancient British languages. The, the Sillers or Western Britons mentioned by Tac Tacitus of the first century as having dark skins and unusually curly hair were, the, were very likely of Phoenician or Egyptian descent. Ancient Welsh folk tales certainly do mention black people, unmistakably Negroes. In the story of Pereder in the Mabinog Mabinogion, M-A-B-I-N-O-G-I-O-N, the blacks mentioned therein might be sailors. Another ancient Welsh poem, Gwadlud, Gwadludmore, tells of rivalry between white and black, M-A-W-R or M-O-O-R. Right, like we were talking about in class yesterday, the um, the theme of of um, putting the Negro black and colored mm -hmm. well, African whatever and more in there also, mm -hmm. and then using the Negro terms and whatever more than the more terms. I see. Okay, well, this is what what Jerry Rogers goes down. More the race as it occurs in European herald heraldry always means Negro. Moore's head, says Berry, is the heraldic term for the head of a black or negro man. Abbott says, Moore's head, the head of a negro. Edmondson says, and this definition is etymologically correct. The Greeks, as was said, to use moros to mean dark or black, and the Romans used it for negroes. Really hair like a Moore's, says Marshall to Claudian, Moors, Ethiopians, and Negritans, that is Negroes, were one and the same. He speaks of the Moors who dwell beside the waters of Gir, G-I-R, most famous of the rivers of Ethiopia that overflows its banks as if it had been another Nile. The Gir referred to here is the Niger or Niger. Sir William Smith says Moors were known in the Alexandrian dialect as blacks and that the Moors must not be considered a different race from Numidians. Atgear says that the Greeks, Romans, and Gauls, the Moors were known as black people. He added, the word Mauritania The word Mauritania inhabited by black populations and was later called Negritia or Negro land, Moor, therefore was the equivalent of Negro. The word Moor, M-O-O-R or M-O-R-E, signifies a primitive, a primitive black population. Since therefore the Romans invaded Britain, France, Belgium, Germany and other parts of Europe, they were undoubtedly took the word Moor meaning black people with them. In fact, so common was the use of more for Negroes that it is astonishing to find some writers calling Moors a white race. McRitchie referred to a passage in Claudian Elevs Moros Nec Falso Nomine Pictos says, now when Claudian wrote, and for a long time after, Mor Moros signified a great deal more than a native of Mauritania. Any Latin dictionary, any old one at least, will tell you that Moros is a Moor, a black -a -more, or a tawny Moor, and Shakespeare used the term Moor as a synonym for Negro. The Roman Moros occurs, the Roman Moros occurs in the European languages as M-O-O-R, M-O-R-E, M-O-R, M-O-H-R, M-O-R-O, M-O-R-I-A-N, M-O-R-I-E-N, and scores of other forms. For instance, the Italian dictionary says M-O-R-O, Umo, Nero, 
Napier, black man from Ethiopia. The Century Dictionary said more means blackamore, hence Morian, Moresque, Morisco, Morris. It is such the name in the Teutonic languages. The word more in German, says Stoll, was exactly equivalent to Negro in the time of Othello. And we're going to read this part again. Hence, Morian, Moresk, Morisco, and Norris. What's that? Right? Make sure there's no color line. Right? So now we go to Morris. Right? So Islam to good brother Amor, this is another Amor that sent this picture, right? This is from April 1st, April 1st in Vancouver, right? So take a good look at this one, right? This is April 1st in Vancouver, right? April 1st. So this is just yesterday. Title of the article, Vancouver Morris Men Perform in Blackface, Stunning African American Residents. Right? Questions raised over cultural context and racial sensitivity. But Morris Men says, Costume is just tradition. Right? Costume is just tradition. And this is an article by Jessica Barrett, Vancouver Sun, April 1st, 2013. The Vancouver Morris men at Longsdale Key. Cicely Walker couldn't believe her eyes when she walked out of her Olympic Village apartment on a recent weekend afternoon to find a group of street performers entertaining at the neighborhood plaza. The surprise was not a pleasant one. An African American who immigrated to Canada several years ago, Walker said she was stunned to find the Vancouver Morris men dancers performing traditional English song and dance in blackface. I was just thinking, am I really seeing that, she recalled? Originally from Atlanta, Georgia, Walker said she took immediate offense to the use of blackface, black makeup which was traditionally been doned by white performers in an effort to mock, mimic, and stereotype African American culture. The practice rose the practice rose to prominence during the vaudeville, vaudeville era and is considered an offensive and racist taboo in many parts of North America and Europe today. Cognizant of the filter of her cultural background, Walker said she decided to give the performer the benefit of the doubt. She watched the remainder of the show and afterwards spoke with one of the dancers who told her the face paint represented a tradition of Moorish dancers disguising their faces with soot or cork, not impersonating black people. But Walker felt she felt, she felt the group hadn't done enough to explain the context of its costume choice, nor was it immediately obvious to the audience. She said the, report, the, re, the performer replied that he'd heard similar concerns before, which to me said, yeah, we know what we're doing is hurting people, she said. Typical nigger slave mentality, right? After blogging you're about saying, her... You're saying they have the typical... No, the, 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 the sister who's witnessing this, mm -hmm. and she's complaining. She's having a typical yeah. slave mentality. She's having a typical slave mentality. Why? Because you, because my feeling is that, in a sense, you, you shouldn't be upset about that. Right, exactly. Exactly. None to be upset about. Right? But if you're black, yeah, you're going to be upset. If you're African American, yeah, you're going to be upset. If you're Negro, you know, colored, or whatever, yeah, you're going to be upset because of lack of information. If you're more, you're going to say they're right. honoring us. Right? <laughs> After blogging about her experience about a month ago, Walker said she got more than 200 hits and the subject ignited a heated debate on social media over whether blackface is ever appropriate. Both Walker and the Morris men say they've received a mix of overwhelming support 
and vitriolic criticism on various social media forums. After doing some research on the Moorish men tradition, which has groups of dancers in communities all over the world, Walker said many have made the choice to paint their faces a different color or not paint at all. But the Vancouver Morris men, Graham Baldwin, said his group has been performing in Vancouver in blackface for more than 20 years and has rarely heard complaints. We do occasionally get this issue, but it's usually easily explained, said Baldwin, noting that the group only wears blackface as part of its winter performance routine and paint their faces white in the summer. The Morris men dancers often hand out brochures explaining the significance of the face paint, he said. We are sensitive to the fact that some people misinterpret what we do. No permit or license is required by street performers to use the space in the Olympic Village, but performers using the space are required to abide by park board guidelines. The guidelines do not specifically mention offensive content, but do say performers must not jeopardize the comfort and safety of others. And then, and then it goes on, goes on, you know, so she does this article. So, Morris dance, right? The term is derived from Moorish dance, attested as Morisk, M-O-R-I-S-K dance, and Mores, M-O-R-E-Y-S dance, D-A-U-N-C-E. Morris dance in the mid 15th century. The spelling Morris dance appears in 17th century. Comparable terms in other languages are German, Morris Dansk, M-O-R-I-S-K-E-N-T-A-N-Z, also from the 15th century, French, Morisk, Croatian, Moresca, and Moresco, Moresca, or Moresca in Italy and Spain. Another theory is that it's derived from Romanian, Morisca, which means little milk. By 1492, Ferdinand of Aragon and Isabella of Castile succeeded in driving the Moors out of Spain and unifying the country. In celebration of this, a pagan, a pageant known as a Moresca was devised and performed. This can still be seen performed in places such as Ainsa, Aragon. Incorporated into this pageant was the local dance, the Paloteo. This too can still be seen performed in villages of Aragon, Basque Country, Castile, Catalonia, and northern Portugal. The original Moresca is believed to be a sword dance. A similar sword folk dance is known as the Calusari, dance of Romania, which spread abroad in Bulgaria and Serbia and is also believed to be closest related to the Moorish dance. Speculation suggests that the dance was borrowed from Dacia by the Celts. The sticks in Moorish dance are a residual of the swords in Moresca. The similarity to what became known as English Morris is surmised. Although the Great London Chronicle record spangled Spanish dancers performing an energetic dance, before Henry the Seventh at Christmas in 1494. Heron accounts also mentioning plying of the Morris dance four days earlier, which could mean that the Morris dance was an indigenous entertainment already in existence in England, perhaps from the Middle Ages. Early court records state that the Morris was performed at court in her honor, including the dance the Morris or Morris or Maurice dance. And then when you, oh yeah, and this is the Vancouver Morris Dance Guys logo. And obviously that's a seal of, seal of Solomon. <laughs> obviously that's a seal of Solomon, right? Okay, obviously that's seal of Solomon, right? But not only them, when you go. So this is the Vancouver Dancers. Yeah, you know? that's their logo, right? But not only them, when you go and Google. Morris dance, all these different groups come up, and this one, this is the Mossy Back Morris Men. <laughs> the Mossy Back Morris Men, this is their logo. Wow. Right. And clearly that's Circle Seven. 
Sorry, what what makes you believe that? Because so there's the four quadrants right there. One, two, yeah, three, yeah, four. Yeah. The four quadrants, you and then what, you know what I was picking up on on the three. You see the threes. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I was just yeah, watching right. a talk video right, right, right. three, three, three in right. each quadrant. Right. Representing, but it's funny because right. each one of them is three, three, except for the for the one on the this one right here. That's right, which yeah. isn't a three, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. These mothers, eh? <laughs> <laughs> right. A small statue of Morris Cantor made by. I want to say this. I realize that as much as a part of me has had a lot of anxiety towards this, but I realize because this is in the spirit, I don't know if there's that much to worry about. There's nothing to worry about at all. You know what I mean? Because it's got to come back. Everybody you know wants I mean? to be Morris. Everyone has to be Morris. They have no choice. They have no choice. They have no choice. Right. But what they've done is they've convinced us that we're not Moors. Yeah. And we're everything we, else. That we're everything else, yeah. and that we should be, we should be, hmm. rightfully upset. Right. Any time that they decide to so, to put on to some black face and to characterize, characterize the Moors. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that then again is another form of separating us from ourselves. Which is why it's very important. That Moors take nationality and birthright serious. Well, actually, what I realize is you have to own it, though. Right. right? That, that's, that's the whole thing. Right. Now, check this one. A small statue of a Moriscan <laughs> tank <laughs> oh, made by... <laughs> <laughs> a small statue... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yo, they're happy. You know what I mean? They're happy. Right? A small <laughs> statue <laughs> of a Morris Ken Ken Tanzer. Look at it. It's, it's, a, it's an honor. Yeah, but not everybody will look at it. No, but those are the blacks and the Negroes are going to look at this. As, uh, and get mad at uh, it. Uh, uh, as, insult or honor. as an insult. Right. Right? But that's how far they've gotten, I say. Okay. So, last last um last picture okay. is statue of a Morris Ken Tanzer. Made by Erasmus Grasser in 1480, one of a set of 16, which only 10 remain. This dancer is clearly Moorish, but all the other nine surviving carvings have Caucasian features. All Moorish dancers wear bells on their legs. And everybody's seen this picture before and wonder who's this guy dancing. The Moorish, Moorish man. Mm. Dancing, right. Morris man dancing, and this is you're saying these are carvings and there's yeah, nine, eight carvings, others? yeah, yeah, and all the other there, there's ten, there's sixteen all together, right? There's, there's ten two, left now, right? And nine of the ten are European, all right? And this is the only one that's left. Now, that's what, is, what are you thinking about saying? Is that saying that? It's the same thing with, that we were saying right before we switched the room with them grafting themselves oh, in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same with the, uh, with the man right. wearing the fez uh, on, on the head of the Shriners thing, right? Grafting themselves in, right? right? So they can be part of, of, of the... I think, you know what? I realize this now. This has to be self-preservation. Yeah, that too. Right? Because they know at that. At the end they, of the day, right, if Noble Drew Ali's warning is supposed to be... Is supposed to be is should be sort of uh, heated. What you realize is there's going to come come a reckoning day. Right. Right. So these people are now trying to basically become because hopefully when this reckoning comes, hopefully the Moors will be the ones who are sort of saved. Right. And and, and this is why he made the statement: if you don't do anything right. else. Declare your nationality. And this is why these people now are realizing they better jump on the bandwagon. Hopefully, they can sort of be in blackface when right. the sort of angel of death comes right. and it passes over <laughs> passes them. Passes over them. <laughs> There's one of us, right? All right. I'm right. Just trying to understand the whole. Morrison of Preston Grange, right? And there's the Morrison family. And Morrison, the name Morrison means son of a Moor. So, anybody who you know the name is Morrison. Right, let them know that they're the son of a Moor, and there's their family crest with the brother on it, three brothers on it, right? And again, this is nature knows no color line. And she go get this book, right? And there's the famous 
the famous pictures of all the coat of arms all the coat of arms in Europe with the blackamoor heads on them right let's read some of these names more Morel, Marrow, Morse, Morelli, Morel, Marcant, Mormon, Maurice, Moreau, Mardison, Moran. Right? This, this is how serious it gets in this book. <laughs> this is how serious it gets. Right? All the European family crests with more heads on them, right? Morin, Morien, Morenberg, Morimont, Mornauer, Mormand, Morisi, Morini, Moringen, Morlet, Morlan, Morlot, Vachman. Swartzkopf, Swartz, Swartz, Swartzman, Swartzenegger. Oh yeah, there's Swartzeneggers right there. And that's a what? These are the Moorhead family crest. Swartzenegger. Swartzenegger. Because it's funny, I went to a Jewish high school for a semester, and they called me Swartz, <laughs> which was supposed to be derogatory, <laughs> yeah. right? So I took it as that. <laughs> yeah. but Right, but we were really no, but but in a sense, no, but you know, it's like well, it's we, we <laughs> that's what we were, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, but in a sense, it's in a sense, it's an insult. But in a sense, what I'm realizing now is there is there is there is connection for that. Just like just like we went to school with Italians and they call you Muli. That's right. Which is basically, and we thought you meant eggplant. That's right. But they really call you Muli Ishmael, which is more. Which is more. <laughs> they see you call you Muli. Hug <laughs> those guys now. <laughs> right? Mo Mareshi. Moreshi. Mora. Moredi. Negrir. Negrillo. Negri. Negra. Noir. Negrina. Saracino. They go hard. German families. Grafmir, Morvalt, Unkreschberg, Wenzels, Hurst, Sachin, Anselm, Reitlin, Melbeg. All these are family crests in Europe. Where they're honoring us. And we want to be Negro black colored people. We want to be African American, Trinidadian, Jamaican, etc. Stossel, Central Europe, Gettler, Kofstein, Schorer, Flinmare, Verdon, Rupert. Right. Oh, interesting. Yet again, sorry to interrupt. But no, no, good. I had uh, watching that as I said because I got some new sort of uh, stuff to watch. I was watching my Todd video talking about the, what I realized was, and I think I stated this to you guys a few times before, but not having, which is what we, I think we all have to go and find, which is the knowledge, leaves you being imprinted with, with their version versions right. of knowledge. Yeah. All right. So if you can't be connected to your heritage, you're going to have a hard time. So if right. I wipe out everything and then tell you this is you, well, you'll take this, right? So I mean, part of you me, think we don't have anything. So yeah. part of me starts to understand sort of the devious nature of right. of, of of their of their program, right? Right. Right. All right. So we'll close out with um, official. Business to the Home Office in care of Emily Ill, Forsters Hall, 44th and State Street. Islam, 
Brother C. Kirkman Bay, this is to notify you that the above named organization, Morris Science Temple of America, in convention September 15th to the 20th, rescinded by voting out the mistake made by the second annual convention of October 1929. And in doing so, you hold your membership role as when our prophet was here. And we hope you will still cooperate with the organization under the five principles, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. We hope further that you will comply with this notice and govern yourself accordingly as there is but one supreme grand advisor in the Morris Science Temple of America, that being Noble Juali, as there is but one supreme grand advisor in the Morris Science Temple of America, that being Noble Juali, and anyone else attempting to be from now on is assuming authority of himself and is liable to the penalties of the law. Peace. More Science Temple of America, Noble Juali founder, Emily Ill. Chairman, Forster's Hall, 44th and State Street, Chicago, Illinois. So today's readings were Luke Bean Files. Make sure you go ask your grand sheet, grand governor, whoever in the temple, make sure you get this. Right? It shouldn't be it shouldn't cost more than than thirty dollars to print. I only know because I printed one today for for more, right? And it came up to thirty bucks. So it shouldn't be more than thirty dollars to print this. Where would you get that from, though? You have it. In yeah, this is like this is my one. Yeah, but how um, did you? How do you then get a copy of that? Yeah, you just pay thirty bucks and you get a copy. So I give you thirty dollars, and where do you go? That's you go it. to go to a print store. Oh, and then you and just, just give it to them. them. Just give it to them, and then they print it up. All right. Well, get that. Okay. And the second book, Nature Knows No oh. Color Line, J. A. Rogers. It may be good to get this. All right. Close it out. Close out. Islam Saturday mornings online. We got about we had about you know 11, 12 back and forth on and off. You know what I mean? So Islam Saturday mornings. Give thanks for the dealing with the the back and forth that we're dealing with today. You know how it goes sometimes. We close e. off Rogers? five on the left, two on the right. Hold on, sorry, J. E. Rogers. Yeah, nature knows no color line. Okay. Uh, five on the left, two on the right. A lot of father of the universe. A lot of father of the universe. Father of love. Father of love. Truth. Truth. Peace. Peace. Freedom. Freedom. And justice. And justice. Allah is my protector. Allah is my protector. My guide. My guide. And my salvation. And my salvation. By night and by, by day. By night, night and by day, day, through His Holy Prophet, through His Holy Prophet, Noble Juali, Noble Juali, Islam, 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 Islam. 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 Hotel. So what Please. do you have to say? Go offline, and then I want to ask. You.